Oh, Bex, Jehovah's Witnesses, how are you? Hope you're doing well. Uh, so I'm waving at my daughter and her little friend Lola, who's playing in my front garden. Uh, no, all's well with me. So sorry it's been a long time since I made a video. I've been having a really hard week. Uh, this, we've been very busy at home. We're getting ready to move. My dog went missing. Didn't want to bring it up, but we were very upset. And uh, if you look over in that direction there, you may see her sleeping. She is home, safe and sound. Did you see her there? I hope you did. Uh, no, it, it was it was very good, but boy, oh boy, we were upset. Uh, and then when I announced, they had the council told us they had found her 30 miles away. They said, uh, oh, and there's 120 pounds for your trouble. So I was like, oh, I love my dog. Not an awful lot, apparently. <laughs> so anyway, I wanted to make a video for you. I uh, hope you're all doing well, as usual. And I wanted to do a video, something that's close to my heart. Something that we all experienced. Those of us who are born in, you know, raised Jehovah's Witnesses. And it's about their experiences as children. Now, this came to me because I was on the uh, JW.org website. I look so you don't have to. And it was a thing they've got at the moment on called uh, Discipline That Works. And I'm going to give you, I'll quickly peruse it for you so you can sort of see the point. And then I want to go to a different site and I want to tell you uh, about our experience. And, you know, I think we all shared it, most of us. So here's their, their current story, uh, their current article. What I find interesting about it is that it's very, uh, it doesn't really say anything. Right? Which is very, very good if you're trying to fend off lawsuits. I wonder, I wonder who'd be fending off a lot of lawsuits these weather. Uh, undeniably, parenting is hard work, but holding back discipline when it is warranted makes the task even harder. Why? Because without discipline, children continue to be unruly, which exhausts the parents. And parents give consistent direction, which confu oh, give inconsistent direction, which confuses the children. On the other hand, loving, balanced discipline can train a child's thinking and shape his moral character. It also helps children feel secure as they grow to responsible adulthood. But where can you find reliable guidance for disciplining your children? Ooh, well, let's find out. The value of Bible principles. It always comes back to the Bible. Nobody ever tells you about the I Ching, do they? Get the dice out. I decide whether you're guilty. You got three sixes. Now you must be punished. The value of Bible principles. The Bible says in Proverbs, foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. Well, that is a fact. Right? I always thought if you must be, if you're forced to pick two books of the Bible that are the least intolerable for me, you know, even as a non bible person these days, I would go with Proverbs and I would go with the book of James. Because I, I, it's just my opinion, but I think they're pretty, pretty reasonable. Okay, uh, although children can be delightful, thoughtful and kind, they are also inclined to do foolish things. Therefore, children need discipline. Oh, get the rod out. What is it? Spare not the rod. What was that song that we had about it? beating your child? Beat your child because you love you for it. Although children can be delightfully thoughtful. Oh, here we are. The Bible says do not hold back discipline. Get that rod out again. You need not fear that balanced discipline will damage your children or cause them to resent you later in life. When lovingly administered discipline can help your children learn to accept correction humbly. A skill that they will need even as adults. Well, as an adult, if... If somebody hit me with a stick or smacked me across the face, I would be inclined to punch them back. Just saying. But now, that said, I'm not an anti-smacker, uh, as my children will tell you. Uh, there, now we are. The Bible says, whatever a person is sowing, that he will also reap. I think that's a bit uh, more ethereal. It's sort of out there. I don't really get that. The Bible says a child left unrestrained brings shame on his mother. <laughs> While parents should never be abusive, they would also need to avoid the other extreme, that of being permissive. Children of permissive parents have little sense that the adults in the house are the one who is in charge. Says the book, The Price of Privilege, if you do not assume your authority, your child may well assume that he is at the helm. Un inevitably, he will make unwise choices that will cause him and you grief. Well, as a parent of nine and a six-year-old, I can tell you that whether or not you sit them down nicely or uh, whack them across the back of the head, they will make unwise choices, okay? And as a 42-year-old man, I fuck up constantly. So don't worry, guys, it's never gonna change. The Bible says a man will stick to his wife and the two will be one flesh. I think this is them trying to say that, you know, you wanna, you wanna keep your nose together, okay? Help for parents, be loving, Bible verse, be consistent, Bible verse, be reasonable. I will discipline you to the proper degree. Isn't that, uh, now you see, well, did, they use, did they use the word smacking? They didn't, did they? Did they use the word beating? No, they didn't use any of those words. Now, let's look at our childhood 
And let's let's see what this actually works out to be in the real world. Do do do. Now I found this on on a so a site called oh is it a PDF? It's a PDF file out of the out of the cocoon dot net. And uh, this is a chap. Now it doesn't have his name. It doesn't have his name on the bottom. So I'd like to give him full. Uh, Brenda. Oh, it's Brenda Lee. Brenda Lee's awesome. And I'm just going to steal some of her comments because some of them are awesome. And just tell you what, because they're my experiences too. Uh, when I was a 12 year old, my 19 year old sister married a Jehovah's Witness. And one year later, she had a beautiful baby boy. Boy, he is to mate. That's what they called it in our hall. From the time John was old enough to walk, he adoringly followed me everywhere. A simple task such as going to the bathroom proved to be no small feat. John moaned and pleaded for me outside the door until I emerged. <laughs> ah, okay. I adored him. During summer break, I sometimes spent a week visiting my sister. We would talk normal stuff and I'd help her clean the house. Sadly, John would come to know at a tender age of one the frustration I experienced sitting in the anthill during those long sermons in the Kingdom Hall. That was true, wasn't it? Since, since there wasn't a Sunday school atmosphere at those meetings, young children were not, were not allowed to amuse themselves with toys or colouring books. When John started fidgeting, I did everything in my power to keep him still. Uh, when I ran out of tricks and could no longer contain his energy, his father grabbed him by the arm and literally dragged him to the restroom to beat him. It's true. So true. I remember kids getting beaten all the time. My parents, as I've said many times, were not beaters, but they were nippers. Hello, Emily. What do you want? Okay, I'll come in a wee minute, okay? Shoot! Shoot! Okay, I'll be back in a sec. Sorry for the delay. That was my daughter trying to argue with me that she could stay up to half nine. She's nine years old! She can't! Anyway, dear me. So anyway, we, where, where were we? We were talking about getting beaten. I was not a beaten child. I was a nipped child. Right here in the nippy arm area. It was not nice. I did not appreciate that. So that was if you weren't answering, if you were fidgeting too much, all that kind of stuff. But anyway, Brenda's telling us about her experience which is a one-year-old being taken outside to be beaten, because that's normal, isn't it? That's the good old days. You know, if you go back into the 1970s and 80s watchtowers, they're like really, yeah, get out there, fuck them up. But not anymore. Nowadays, they're more like, ah, oh, maybe you just want to discipline your child. Ooh, punch him in the jaw. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, John's beatings became such a ritual that when his daddy reached for him during a meeting, he knew it was meant to beating. Ah, oh, it's lovely. It's a great relationship you'd have with your son. He cried and pleaded, no, daddy, as he buckled his legs, refusing to walk. Everyone in the kingdom hall could hear his screams. The sound that echoed from the blows varied. Sometimes his father would use his hand, sometimes a belt, because you got to mix it up. After 10 or 15 minutes, they would return with John hyperventilating, hyperventilating, trying to catch his breath, beaten into composure. He would sit a while longer, usually staring motionless into space, his eyes bloodshot from crying. If fate smiled on him, he fell asleep in my arms for the rest of the meeting. If not, it was back to the restroom for another beating and the cycle continued. And, and honestly, like, hands up, those of us who are uh, born-ins, you know, who went up, as, grew up with it as children, who didn't experience this? There's no, I don't believe there's a soul who didn't experience this. If not themselves personally, certainly kids in your congregation. One heart-wrenching day is forever seared under my memory. My sister confided that... John, now too, had asked his father to hit him on his hands with a belt instead of his ass. When asked why he wanted to be punished that way, he said, because my butt is too sore. Isn't that, isn't that, isn't that great? Dear me, you're not, you're not screwing up your children, Jehovah's Witnesses. You're good people. You really are. You're not a cult. You don't deserve to be banned. <laughs> oh my God. Now listen, here's some of the replies from other people. That was very common. I remember those days. And no, you were not the only one that noticed this behavior. And it was done, of course, at the request of the Watchtower Society. They always encouraged the parents to take the children outside and let them meet Dr. Green, or Switch as they called it. Them suckers burnt like nothing I've ever felt before. Sometimes blood would pour out. Ah, oh, because that's how you learn to love Jehovah. Beat them till they bleed. It's like a Muslim school, isn't it? Like some kind of, some kind of horrible Sharia school, when you think about it. Well, I used to, to see it at all times when I became a JW. I lived in Arizona and it was very common to see mothers, fathers take their babies outside and give them a whipping. Babies, by the way, in capitals. Kids used to cry up a storm, but I did find out that neighbors' kids started complaining about it. Oh my God. Oh, that neighbors started to complain about it. All children in the UK are expected to be smacked if they don't keep still. I saw a woman taking her nine-month-old out to smack it before because it was making cooing noises. I reported her and told her that if I saw her again, I'd report her to the authorities. I never saw her do it again until the kid was about two 
Then she started doing it again. What did make me sick was the show. Oh, I remember the show that was put on for all to see that they were t taking the kid out to be smacked with the approving smiles of everyone. Yeah, because all the guys like in the back would be going, mm, yeah, yeah, beat him, beat him. That's how you do it. Beat him. I remember those fucking people. Oh, the smacking of kids is still encouraged today. Is it? Any Jehovah's Witnesses who've stumbled here, do you still beat your kids? Do you do that? You're lovely people. Oh my God. What about being forced to sit in the summer sun with no shade during all day religious assemblies that lasted three to five days in succession? Was that humane? I remember seeing many Jehovah's Witnesses pass out from the AKD, even in sunny Ireland, from heat stroke at every summer event, and there were many times I felt on the verge myself. Well, I'm going to leave it at that, because I just think that's appalling, isn't it? I mean, that's the Jehovah's Witnesses that I grew up with. That's the ones I grew, grew to, to know and love. And it's, it's horrendous that you think about it. You know that we suffered so much. But no, don't ban them. Because they're awesome. They all, they've all got human rights. Best of luck with that. Guys, thanks very much for watching The Great Apostate. Wouldn't exist without your continued support and, and fun and comments. So please keep it up and tell your friends that I exist. And have a good day and bye-bye.